Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. It's good to be here with all of you in the name of the Lord. And uh, so glad to be able to celebrate the first Sunday of the month or of the year and of the decade uh, with everyone. Amen. I am uh, certainly uh, looking forward to all the many things that God will do for us. And I hope you all had a good New Year's. And uh, thank everybody that came out for New Year's Eve service. I think we, we uh, all got a nice little anointing for all of us. Amen. So even if you weren't here, amen, just reach up and grab a little anointing. It's in the atmosphere. Amen. I, I'm going to grab what I missed in the name of the Lord. Um, well, why don't we jump into our preaching time? Uh, certainly, we uh, are excited to um, see this, this message as a first kind of uh, leap into this theme that we are um, proclaiming for 2020. Uh, of course, there's uh, all these kinds of ways that we want to awaken the, the vision of God and the sight of God by faith into our lives. And so this year, we're going to hopefully be uh, proclaiming and <clears throat> inviting all of us to see uh, the world through the eyes and the lens of God and, and God's purpose and God's call for our life. And, and so uh, every uh, January, it seems as if this, these passages of scripture from the uh, uh, Christmas passages or the Epiphany passages are always apropos. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter number 60, I believe. Is that right? Isaiah chapter number 60. And we're going to uh, look at verses 1 through 5 um, as we prepare ourselves to uh, hear the word of the Lord today. Uh, certainly, we um, are expecting and hoping that there will be a, a great and mighty opportunity for all of us to continue to um, allow this new season, this new decade, to open up our imagination for what God would do through us. I know that uh, the consecration has already been talked about a little bit, uh, but it is certainly worth reiterating that uh, the great gift of consecration is that it allows you and I to to be able to, to start our new years off with a, a, a radical recommitment to the practices of faith that we know through time have always uh, drawn God's people closer to God's heart. And uh, practices uh, actually make us perfect. Uh, not perfect as it relates to uh, you never making a mistake, but perfecting the perfected nature of, of us being uh, made better, that uh, practices, they, they, they almost are those catalysts that help you and I shave some of those parts of our lives off and, and, and become more transformed, as the scripture says, into the image and the likeness of, of God. And so as we engage in these practices, I invite you to take advantage of this opportunity to, to imagine, God, what would you have changed in me and how can I indeed be changed so I can see the world as you see it. And uh, this is, I think, uh, what we will hope to speak a little bit about uh, today uh, before we take our communion and uh, our first Eucharist celebration for the year. So Isaiah 60, verse number one. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. All right, and I think it's up on the screen as well. The scripture says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you and God's glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. So lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from far away and your daughter shall be carried on their nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you and the wealth of the nation shall come to you. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. We, we are indeed going to take a few moments just to unpack this uh, theme a little bit around see it and uh, talk about vision, talk about 
blindness, talk about the practices that we must uh, maintain and sustain to get us through this season. So by hands with me, let's pray for a few moments. God, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word of God that is a lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to read your word, to speak and preach your word, to hear your word. I pray that you will bless every person under the sound of my voice. Pray, God, that you will allow the anointing of God that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest on me and even the hearers of this word, and we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Pat yourself on the chest and say, I need to see something. Amen. I need to see something. You know, uh, I remember quite some time ago, I used to joke with folks who were always talking about their New Year's resolutions. And, you know, all of us make this nice long list of things that we want to see done and be done in 2020 or in the new year. How many already got your New Year's resolutions? Amen. All right. We don't do that that much no more. All right. Probably because... <laughs> It's like this is a new season, it's a new decade, it's a new year, and none of my resolutions were done last year, so I'm just going to forget about that, right? I mean, I, I, I do believe that there is something powerful about uh, trying to, to, to create a trajectory for that which you have not yet seen or endured. Uh, but I often tell folks that more than a New Year's resolution, you need a New Year revelation, you need to be positioned in such a way where you and I can fully get tuned into the ways in which God is moving and acting and inviting us to partner with God as we continue to experience the redemption of all creation. It is indeed the case that one of our greatest challenges, we who follow the ways of Jesus, we who have this sense of the eternal, is that there is, at the same time, God's work that's happening right alongside the work of our adversary, the work of our enemy, the work of this safe, fallen world. And we have uh, been able, I think, in various different parts of our lives to really pinpoint that ain't nothing but the devil. Amen. Uh, you know, you, 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 you be walking around, or you be dealing with folk, or you be looking at the news, and, and you be like, that ain't nothing but the devil. I, I'm clear when God is moving, but I'm also clear when the enemy is at work. Somebody say amen, right? And, and, and part of what God's work in our lives allow us to be able to do is see clearly the things that we are being invited to partner with God to do. In the biblical text, particularly in the Old Testament or in the Hebrew scriptures, the, 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 the parts of the text that predate or, or come before the arrival of Jesus, there were always these kinds of experiences that the followers of uh, the Torah, the, the, the Jewish, and, and even those who were uh, not Jewish but, but followed uh, the, 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 the Torah, if you will, they, they would have these experiences where they would interact with divine beings. And these interactions would force them to have to rethink everything that's happening in their life. Because as they were going along in the just everyday uh, routine of their life, you know, they ran into something they could not explain. And that thing that they could not explain stopped them in their tracks. It was like a radical reorientation of what they thought they had already had worked out. And this kind of encounter with God that Many of the, the patriarchs and matriarchs of the Christian faith, uh, Abraham and Sarah and Deborah and, and, and Jacob, they all would have these moments where, where they would, would have this encounter and, and it, would, it would force them to say, man, did I just encounter God? And, and, and throughout the, the biblical text, this kind of became known as epiphanies. These moments where God would break through their, their, their nice kind of fixed realities and begin to give them a sensory overload of God's presence. 
And that sensory overload radically changed the way in which they even engaged their everyday struggles and challenges. Could it be that with all that's going on in our lives, God is trying to give you and I an epiphany? I don't know if you ever heard someone say, you know, I, I need an epiphany, or I just got an epiphany, a light just came on. Anybody ever had a light just come on, and man, you, 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 you were kind of just going through the course of, of your, your job, your relationship, your own kind of self-discovery and healing, and all of a sudden, a light comes on, ding, 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 ding. Man, it may be in your therapy session. It may be in your prayer time. It may be while you watching your stories. It may be while you gossiping and lying. Amen. I don't know. But, but in the course of your journey, a light comes on. And when that light comes on, doesn't it force you to actually rethink what you may have thought you had already thought through? Do I have a witness in here this morning? Amen. That, that there are lights that come on in our lives. See? Part of what this new year, I believe, may be offering you and I is an opportunity to have a series of spiritual, divine, God-centered epiphanies. An epiphany that can radically reorient your vision. Your vision of what has happened your vision of what is happening, and your vision of what is to come. When we talk about vision here at The Way, you know, many of you know for, for quite some time, you know, we used to go through what we called the live series. Anybody remember the live series? I mean, every, every quarter we would preach on what it meant to be loving, what it meant to be intellectual, what it meant to be visionary, what it meant to be empowering. And we would spend a whole series on just what it means to be a person who is driven by God's vision. And we would use the, this, this, this uh, description of vision as foresight with insight based on hindsight. That, that vision is, you should write this down. This is nice, amen. I don't know who said it. Amen, there's all kinds of different variations of it on the web. It's just some divine knowledge just dropped out of heaven, amen. And, 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 and it's attributed to all kinds of different folk. I heard my pastor say this back when I was a little pup, amen, in San Jose. And, and it, was, it was just something that really stuck with me, that vision is foresight, the ability to see ahead. The ability to see beyond you, be, 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 be able to see in front of you and with, with a certain kind still of limitation. Because how many of you know that even with the sight you have, you can only see a certain distance? Uh, in as much as I would love with my eyes right now to see all the way to New York. Amen. My, 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 my sight has limitations. Somebody say amen, right? And, 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 and you know, the older you get, your, your limitations become a little more pronounced. So you got to go to the doctor, you got to get some tools, they call those glasses, bifocals, amen, uh, a magnifying glass, whatever you need, just to help enhance, not hating on nobody, I'm going to wait next week, amen, uh, to, to help enhance what you've already been given. Isn't this interesting? That vision, the ability to see ahead is something that, that we may possess but we always need some instruments perhaps to help us see what we already are able to see a little more clearly. Foresight, with insight that there is indeed uh, this, this need for you and I to have some extra information. That anyone with vision is not just dominated by what they know currently. That there is some inside information, some extra information, some, some, some new ideas, some, 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 some revelation, if you will, that can help inform what you see ahead. Vision. Everybody say vision, right? And then hindsight, the ability to not be ahistorical, right? That I'm not going to be someone who is just driven by what I see in front of me or the new information.
information that I may be getting currently and disconnect myself from the history that has produced me. Vision, everybody say vision, right? Foresight with insight based on hindsight. And this year, I believe that there is an opportunity for all of us to ask God, Lord, help me to have the vision to see what I need to see to be more faithful in this season. And be mindful, people of God, faithfulness in this season is the highest calling for the follower of God. God is not asking for you to be perfect without mistake or error. God is calling for you and I to be faithful. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, be faithful. Just be faithful. And being faithful requires vision. It requires you to be clear about, God, what are you asking me to do? What are you calling on me to do? And this idea of seeing vision is not something that is relegated to just a few people. It is something that all of us, everybody say all of us, all of us have access to. In Joel chapter 2, many of you know that this is one of our kind of bedrock principles here at The Way. Uh, the scripture says that in the last day, God will pour out God's spirit on all flesh. Everybody say all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even on my handmaidens and my hand servants will I pour out my spirit, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God's spirit being poured out on all flesh allows all of us to be able to see visions, to dream dreams. To have the ability to see those things that are not as though they already are. And if you're like me, there's some things in 2020 I need God to bring into my reality. I can't wait for it to show up for me to start celebrating. But I believe that God, I'm going to celebrate in advance. I'm going to be able to walk through this year with an anticipatory praise. With an anticipatory faith that I expect you God to help me to see what I can't see. And one of the things that I love then about this text is that it gives you and I all kinds of principles. And I preach this passage so many times. I get new principles out of it every time I preach it. The first thing that I love about this passage is that it calls you and I to focus on the light and glory of God. Everybody say focus on the light. Focus on the glory. Focus. Our, 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 our first task in this year is to start from above and not from below. What, 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 one of the great theological to us that, that we used to talk about in our theological Man, classes where you were is that we are always think being invited who you was hanging to out with in 2012. Discipleship, to think follow of the God job you lost in 2014. Above, think of how your heart was below. ripped to shreds in 2015. Meaning that God, think of how you, I have a choice to make. Can I discipline and, and, and train myself to start with you and your glory and your purpose and your principles? Or am I going to be driven by the realities of my circumstance? How many of you know that when you start from above, when you start with God, when you start with the light and the glory of God, there are so many more possibilities of what could happen than if you only start with our own tragic circumstances. I wish I could talk to somebody in here today. Amen. If you're like me, I can get so drawn into my own mud. The, 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 the ugliness of my life, the struggles and the challenges. And, and then I, I will look up from my mud situation talking about, God, where are you? God, why me? Why not them? <laughs> Amen. You know, I ever prayed that prayer, God, why, why me? 
Hey man, I, these folk over here, you know, they not even they they don't even believe in you, God. They they trifling, they 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 they, they messy, they they rebellious, and I'm I'm the one serving you, right? And yet my circumstance, I find myself in the mud. And when you and I get caught in that kind of posture, we can miss the light and the glory of God that should be our starting point. I got to learn to start from above. I got to learn to start with God. Somebody say start with God. I got to start with God. What first are you trying to reveal to me? What are your promises across time and place? What are the principles that I have learned? What are the, the, the experiences you brought me through? What are the testimonies and the stories that I can recall to the front of my mind? That can help me be able to now see all of these circumstances I'm going through in a different kind of way. You got to start with God in 2020. Meaning you got to put your feet squarely in the glory and the light of God. Don't you know that when you stand in the glory and the light of God, that glory and that light can now illuminate every single step you make. But if I and if we get too caught in our mud and, and and believe me you know start with the light and glory don't mean you're not gonna have no mud it just means that the light and the glory though will be your starting point it means that even when i'm going through the mud i'm going through the mud with the light and the glory of god when i'm going through the challenge i'm going through the challenge with the light and the glory of god and in this 2020 season i want you to challenge yourself as the scripture says that the light has come upon you and the glory of the Lord has risen among you. That there is light and glory even in your challenge. There is light and glory even in your struggle. Even in all the bad news and the troubling news and the crises we see around us. I want you to be able to see the light and the glory of God that has come upon us and that is breaking through to us. Because it is through the light and the glory that you will be able to see a way out of your circumstance. Uh, so the first, the first thing that, that you, you should ask yourself, as I move into this new year, how am I starting from above? How would God's light and glory help you to see more of God's possibilities in this new year? How will you get an epiphany? You, you allowing this revelation, this, this, this clear uh, 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 supernatural intervention in your life allow you to see more than what you would see if you just went without it. And please, child of God, hear me today. Many of us are so used to going without it. We, 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 we come to church. We check off the church attendance box and we go right back to, out into the world without an epiphany, without an encounter. We don't even believe that God is able to radically break into your circumstance. But I want 2020 to be a year where even when you feel yourself, you know, struggling and slipping into some places of, of, of despair, that God reminds you. That you got an epiphany on the horizon. God's getting ready to turn a light on. Just as easy as you walk into a room with the light off, God says, I can flick a light on. I, I, can, I, I can pour out my spirit on you in such a way that when this light comes on, you're going to have more joy and more peace and, and more hope and more power and more healing because the glory of the Lord is rising among you. you use the imagery of steam think about that think about that when you're boiling water and you see steam just coming up as a result of the heat every time you see steam this year i want you to just see the glory of god so it's a wonderful image of god's glory rising among you Man, just, 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 just uh, let steam be your reminder. I, I may be going through some hard times. I'm going to boil me some water. Amen. 
<laughs> and I'm going a, I'm, I'm to a, I'm a boil this water and I'm going to let this water be a reminder that just like the steam rises, so does God's glory rise among us. The uh, second thing that, that I, I think the scripture lifts up is that you and I must overcome blindness. If you're going to see in 2020, you and I must overcome blindness. Now, you know, in, in the text, the scripture says that darkness covers the earth and, and thick darkness the people. And, and it, it's always worth saying that in an age where anti-blackness or, or othering has become su such a, 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 a common, common practice among many of us, uh, we, we, should, we should do a little unpacking of, of what darkness and, and this word means and how we may have to root that out in our own lives. Because darkness as a subconscious or even conscious proxy uh, for our feelings and attitudes often uh, uh, catalyze a negative association. When the scripture says that darkness has, has covered the people <clears throat> and it has risen uh, uh, among, among us, the prophet is not speaking to the ideology of, of, of human hierarchy, of racism, of, of white supremacy, of othering when the word darkness is invoked. Rather, it is a condition of spiritual and moral decay. It is a condition that causes one to have distance from faithful living. Now, the great challenge you and I have in this moment is that darkness or blindness, the inability to perceive light, has indeed covered the people covered our land, covered our culture. This, this conscious and subconscious association of, 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 of how you and I have allowed darkness or blindness to keep us from being able to see what God sees, see how God loves, see how God solves and, 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 and redeems, it leaves us then with a very limited set of tools. I was, I was uh, doing a little bit of reading about, about, about blindness and, and, and what causes people to be blind. It, it's, it's, it's a fascinating thing. Your eyes are fascinating. Our eyes, your eyes, they're fascinating. That, 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 that normal vision, it depends on a super complex process. I'm about to give y'all a good biology lesson up in here today, amen. You, some of you gonna pass a test this semester, amen. Just, just off of this point, amen. I think I learned this in my physics class and I got into a big argument with my physics professor because I just did not believe what he was saying. That our eyes, when light enters our eye through the cornea and the lens, the iris helps to focus the image. And the light that comes into our eyes, it, it reflects on the back wall of our eye where it starts to stimulate and is perceived by millions of tiny nerve endings. Your eye has, listen to this, millions, everybody say millions, millions of little tiny nerve endings that make up the retina. Can you imagine how small the, the makeup, the materials that make up your eye must be for millions of them to be in that little old thing? And the light hits those nerve endings and those nerve endings begin to stimulate and form a picture that your brain, through years of practice and years of experience, begin to define so you can understand. Think about this. All the things you are seeing are happening in, it ain't even split seconds. I, I don't know what's a split of a split of a split of a split split. <laughs> Second, but 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 it's all happening so fast that that you are unconsciously able to perceive, so you are not blind to what is before you. Now, this is this is one of the best parts of this is that the image that you are seeing 
is upside down. In your eye, everything you see is upside down originally. But your brain at about six months begins to immediately turn everything right side up. So, so, so listen to this. Babies see the world upside down. What you think about that for a second? Babies see the world upside down. But about six months, the brain has been able to flip all of these images right side up. She give you a whole lot of, lot of, lot of, you know, insight when you're dealing with a little baby, amen. They just giggling at you and whatnot. They ain't giggling at you because you just look funny. <laughs> they giggling probably at you because they're trying to figure out why is this person looking upside down. But the baby don't even know what's upside down because that's just the baby's reality. I always talk with some of my friends, Brother Antonio, a few other people, that our democracy, our country, when you judge it against the length of other nations and empires, is still a baby country. 250 years, it's not that long. And you can tell that we still are acting out with baby tendencies. I, I, anybody ever, you know, I love my kids, they, they're not babies no more for the most part. But they, they, you know, they, they had a moments where, you know, they, 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 they titting for tat. They, 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 you know, you do something to me, I'm do something to you. Not easily, you know, able to resolve conflicts. So you, usually an adult has to come in and help them figure out how to get past this current moment because they do not have the breadth of experience yet. To, to, to resolve conflict in a way that does not cause harm. But right now, our country is demonstrating, in my mind, such immaturity that we still allow ourselves to solve every conflict we have with more violence, more hatred, more malice, more division. We claim we are a democracy, but yet we can't ever get much consensus that moves the whole of our people to a place of healing and justice. I want you to imagine that God is trying to invite us to engage in a kind of, of, of commitment that addresses our blindness. In, 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 in the in the in the the, 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 the article I was reading, it, it talked about visual acuity. This, this sense that we all reach visual acuity, meaning that we get the opportunity at a certain age to not only see things right side up, but we also can reach 2020 vision. That's what visual acuity means. That you reach, you reach, 2020 vision. But then as you as you continue to read, it's fascinating. It says that your visual acuity can decline. Some people it declines. As soon as you hit your visual acuity, it can start declining right at that moment. And that's why folks, you know, get glasses or folks have these extra kinds of tools to help them to see. Uh, uh, it says usually your visual acuity starts to hit its most sharpest decline in the sixth or seventh decade of life. Which, which le leads me to know that, that even though we may have visual acuity, physiologically, dare I now say venture to the spiritual, even though you may have visual acuity, it is not necessarily the case that it will be permanently that way. That you may need some support to help you see clearly with the vision God has already given you. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. 
that your visual acuity today may not be enough for tomorrow. What you think you are sure of today, you may need a little bit of help, a little bit of support. And in our tradition, as followers of Jesus, we believe that the greatest support you can get is the power of God's spirit. God, help me to use the power of your spirit, the, 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 the wisdom of our tradition, the, the gift of our community, the, the, the guidepost of our text, of our scriptures, and dare I even say the redemptive power of my experience, of our experiences. Let these be the things that help keep our vision at a 2020 level. When my blindness starts to creep in, when, my, when my, my, my inability to see the whole starts to creep in, may I then use the tools. Are y'all hearing this today? The tools of community, the tools of my tradition, the tools of scripture, the tools of experience, the tools of the Holy Spirit to help me keep seeing clearly. Oh, so, 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 th th this second question, what is blinding you from seeing anew in 2020? What is keeping you from seeing anew in 2020? And given the personal challenges and national crises we face, do you have the vision to see beyond our current problems and solutions? How can we train our eyes to see what you can't see? How do you train your eyes through the eyes of faith to see your family saved even though they're not saved? To see your body healed even though it's not yet healed? To see another solution besides violence and war? What does it mean for the follower of Jesus in a moment where the drums of war are being beaten? We have a madman as our president and a complicit Congress that are allowing now him to publicly threaten 52 more attacks. Using our tax dollars to bring the world to the brink of war. Is there not a way for you and I as followers of Jesus on a macro and a micro level to say that I will see a solution that does not require violence? And this is a task for you and I. Man, because, you know, it's like, I, Pastor, I can't, I can't control the, 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 the military. Well, you know, may, maybe not, but collectively we could have something to say about it. But how about the violence in your house, at your school, on your job, in your relationship, in your neighborhood? Man, what does it mean for you and I to say, I'm going to find another solution that does not require violence? That peace will start with me, and I have to see it first. Can't just start walking up in a crisis without first seeing before I get there that there is another way. There is another way to move forward without causing harm. And whatever that way is, God, I am indeed going that way. Final thing that I'll say before we wrap up is God in 2020, need you and I to hold on to our joy. Yeah. Yeah. I say, hold on to joy. Say it again, hold on to joy. One more time for the Holy Ghost, hold on to joy. It is important that in this age, of psychological, physical, emotional, and spiritual terror that the people of God hold on to joy. Hold on to the fruit of the spirit that, that gives birth to strength. Hold on to those, 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 those eternal gifts that cannot be diminished by our physical challenges. The old mothers you sing a song said, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. 
What does it mean for you and I? As the scripture says, that as we see more clearly that we will enter into places and we will be thrilled and rejoice. What does it mean to say that I declare and decree that in 2020, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to maintain my joy. I'm going to have joy that, that is, is my strength. I'm going to have the kind of joy that gives my, my weak legs the ability to stand. I'm going to have the kind of joy that will keep my hands lifted up in the middle of my trial. I'm going to have the kind of joy that will bring a song to the front of my mind. I'm going to have a joy that overcomes the enemy. And I'm telling you what not, I'm telling you this out of my own experience. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you that when the joy of the Lord is your strength, even when you cry, you can still have some joy. Amen. Joy is different than happiness. Amen. Happiness was my 49ers winning in Seattle last week. Amen. But before they won, I was sitting there and I was sad. Uh, Pastor Phil took a picture of me and I had my arms crossed. Uh, and I was worrying about the, the outcome. Uh, my heart was dropping and my head was sweating uh, because I was worried and I was filled with anxiety. That's not what I'm talking about. You're going to experience unhappiness and disappointment in 2020, just like you do at any other time. But I believe that God says that the joy that I bring to you is not a joy that will be like a roller coaster. God says I can give you a joy that overcomes the world. I can give you a joy that gives you a sense of of, of perception uh, that even though I may be crying today even though I may be worried today uh, there's something on the inside of me uh, I can't measure it and I can't bottle it uh, but I know it's a persistent uh, drip drip drop uh, of a hope that I can't identify uh, I know uh, that it's something uh, that the world does not have a corner on. Uh, it's something I can't get from a bank account. Uh, it's something I can't get from a degree. Uh, it's something I can't get from my boo. Uh, but this joy I have, uh, I got it from the love of God. Uh, I got it from the hand of God. Uh, and if God gave it to me, uh, then it will sustain me. Uh, 2020, I may go through, uh, but I'm going to keep my hand lifted up I'm gonna keep a song in my mouth I'm gonna keep a praise on my lips because the joy of the Lord it brings me peace the joy of the Lord it brings me strength the joy I'm so glad I got some joy. Do you have the joy? The joy that comes from salvation. The joy that comes from the Spirit. The joy that comes from God. This joy I have. Come on, stand with me, everybody. This joy. I have, you have, we have, it can sustain us. It can be the, listen, it can be the literal material of the light and the glory of God. Joy. Say, Lord, I, 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 I'm trying to stay in the above place. I think the joy will be the wind beneath our wings this year. The joy will be that which keeps you and I able to, 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 to soar on the wings of eagles. Amen. Minister Wayne said this so powerfully on, on, on New Year's Eve that when, when the eagle feels threatened or gets threatened, the eagle's wings begin to expand and the wind carries the eagle closer to the sun. Higher heights. The eagles can fly higher and closer. Higher in, 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 in height and closer to the sun. And all those things that are trying to, the buzzards, praise God. I'm not saying you call anybody a buzzard. But I am saying you spread your wings and fly. And if the things can't hang with you, you just keep on flying. And let the joy of God.
be the wind beneath your wings. Get some practices that can help you interject the joy of God. Amen. Because just as sure as I'm talking to you, you're going to have some circumstances that are not going to easily expose God's joy. Somebody say amen. Someone's going to experience death this year. Disappointment, betrayal. Some of our relationships, our, our finances, our, our, our physical health, the politics, racism, exclusion. This stuff's going to happen this year. But there are some practices that you and I can maintain. We're going through a consecration. That's one practice that you and I can maintain to make sure that, God, I can be sustained this year through the joy of the Lord. Grab the hand of someone next to you. God, I pray for the person I'm touching. I pray for their ability to see, see the world in a way, God, that reflects what you see. Our greatest desire, God, is to dream dreams and see visions, <clears throat> to have our eyes in tune with your eyes, for us to be aligned and coordinated. Lord God, to be in cahoots with you in ways, God, that introduce these moments of revelation and epiphany. I pray today for the person I'm touching today as they enter into this year. I pray, God, that you will help them to see the world like you see it. Help them to see their own lives the way you see it. Help them to see that promise that peace, that power is within their grasp. I pray that they will welcome the light and the glory of God in their life. And I pray, God, that they will focus on the light. Focus on the glory. Focus on it, God. Focus in ways that help us to see you more clearly. And we'll say thank you, Lord. Now lift those hands right where you're standing. It's me, O oh Lord, and I stand in the need of prayer. It's not my mother. It's not my father. It's not my sister. It's not my brother. But it's me, O oh Lord, and I need you. Somebody say, I need you, God. I need you in 2020, Lord, to help me to see. Help me to see more clearly. Help me to see the world as you see it. Help me to see my life as you see it. Help me to know, God, that joy and peace and hope and power are within my sight. I pray, God, that, Lord, I will overcome the blindness that, Lord, is a function often of, of, of my own inability, Lord, to take care of the obstacles that are in my way. Or it may be life, it may be challenge, it may be circumstance, whatever the obstruction is that causes blindness, that causes me to not be able to see. God, I pray today that you will open my eyes that I may see. And this will be the praise I offer to you, God, that you kept me, you sustained me, you held me together through these seasons and this new year. And we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hug two or three people and tell them I can see, I can see, I can see. 2020, I can see it. It's going to come to pass in the name of the Lord.